the Baroness. Hilma Baron has accomplished much in the year and a half she has spent here at the dawn of time. Her most recent accomplishment has been putting together a wind turbine, which is attached to a small electric motor. That in turn, when attached to a clay car battery, can produce and store power. And that is exactly what she intends to accomplish today. And so with that, let us begin. Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm in a Wood. There have been some gaps in the Cataclysm release schedule, but things should be looking better from here on out. I have mostly overcome the plague that is ravaging the real world at the moment. And escaping to this one, well, that suits me just fine. So we need to get this wind turbine up onto the roof. And I'm probably going to want to try and make a wooden stepladder to make it easier for us to get up and down because um, as we know, we can climb up here perfectly fine, but we can't climb back down because, well, the roof connects to the basement in a strange way. I am hoping that if we have a wooden stepladder there, we'll be able to just hop back down. If not, we'll put the wooden stepladder just outside somewhere to make it so that we don't fall on our face. We have landed a few times on the kiln here and it's kind of broken our fall, but yeah, problems do occur. I think the last time we had the chicken cage in our hands, so yeah, not exactly easy to climb down while your hands are that encumbered. But in addition to the turbine project, there are a few other things that have been added in since I've last touched Cataclysm. If I go to consume, we can actually see how much we've taken in the way of iron, calcium, and vitamin C. Right now, it's set to little, and that's because we've only eaten pemmican today. And if we head in and have a look at our stats, we can see that we have a lifestyle section now. And we feel great. This is how healthy we feel. Exercise, vitamins, sleep, and not ingesting poison will increase this over time. And so that's why we get that notification when we wake up in the morning that Hilma is feeling great. And uh, I mean, it's because she is incredibly fit. Every single day we are exerting ourselves and we're also managing to keep our calories up at the same time. So there is that. And then if we head and have a look at crafting, Lots of green pluses, so there are a ton of new things that have been added in here it seems. So let's tell it to show us the unread recipes first. Okay, so we got tonfas that we can make now. We can actually make a wooden tonfa with what we have at our disposal. I don't think we'll look at doing that, but cool to see them there. Under food we have powdered cheese and rehydrated cheese as options. In chems we've got crude lamp oil back. Okay, there we go. So, it's not counting as kerosene. This is a crude natural oil made for use in pre-modern oil lamps. I like to see that. So we should still be able to use our oil lamp without too much trouble. Okay, in electronics, <laughs> a lot of stuff here. Okay, clay battery array. So this is a specific recipe to inner wood so thank you very much to the developers of inner wood for adding this in here it is a set of four clay car batteries wired together in a simple wooden frame okay so that would work really well as a home battery network however building up to that is probably what we're going to do because four clay batteries that's a that's a fair amount for us to uh make use of. We've got the food dehydrator, a makeshift vacuum sealer, which is something that we might actually be able to make use of. Far down the line though, we have a radio activation mod. It's a small piece of electronics that can be attached to certain items and activate them after receiving a radio signal. So we can remotely turn off the lights. I imagine there's much more cool things that we can do than that, but yeah. Uh, and this, this is exciting water wheels and we've got two variations on them here but as we can see it is a water wheel it will slowly recharge the vehicle's electrical power when built over shallow moving water 
unfortunately, we don't have any rivers close by. It's a bit of a hike to get to the other one. No way we can get stuff to stretch that far. But that's really cool. If you are going to build near water, that can be a good option when it comes to power. We also have a methanol fuel cartridge. Varying different types of that. Okay, and then under armor, Kevlar vest. We have a light sheet metal chest guard, which is something that we can make. Now looking at the protection of it, the bash cut and ballistics, I'd be intrigued to see how that stacks up against some of the other things. This seems more like scrap armor. You know, it, it is, in a sense, it's just a piece of sheet metal that's riveted on. You don't have to do any kind of heavy blacksmithing with this one here. Yeah, it looks like it's a whole kind of sheet metal set here, but I like that that is an option. And then we've got variations on the rebreather mask, an extra large and extra small variation. Under other, we have aluminium tanks, a short sledgehammer, which we can make right now. And we can actually make a sledgehammer right now. Huh. Right. Well, that's really good to know. As you can see, the bash that we get from this is 50. And we would need a sledgehammer to be able to knock down certain walls that are inside the Mego Tower. Ha. Huh. We might have to have a look at making this once we do that attack, but I think that's going to be a winter thing. We have an aluminium boat hull, a simple crank mechanism, which I believe would actually allow us to make a bicycle, possibly. It is a simple cranking mechanism consisting of a bent metal arm attached at a right angle to a rotating shaft. It can be used to convert circular motion into reciprocating motion or vice versa by means of muscle power. So I guess this would be more like a stationary power. We did do something similar with Bran back in the day where he had a exocycle that he would use to charge things and we can make that. So yet again, another option for us. We got an aluminium pot. It seems like there's been a bit of an aluminium overhaul here. Uh, a pair of makeshift scissors and makeshift bandage. We've also got the heavy sledgehammer, a mountable autoclave, the ingots, a clay urn, and scrap aluminium. So some of these I think are probably just variations on recipes, but good to see them all there. And then finally, under practice, we have some new things handguns, beginner, and marksmanship, a tool with gun of one or more. Being able to improve our rifling skill would be nice, but that's what I'm looking for, shotguns, because I'm pretty sure that our current weapon, the blunderbuss, counts as a shotgun rather than a rifle. That will not increase our skill above three, but I think it will bring it to three. Huh, and submachine guns as well, Good to see that those are options there. But for these ones, it looks like we do need to have a aim game target practice kit, which that might be under construction. Let's have a look here. Aim. Uh, no, I don't see that there. And it's not in crafting either. So intriguing. Yep. Nope. I don't see it. Okay. Well, <laughs> maybe it's something that does need to be found or maybe it's something that will just be added in eventually. But yes, a lot of new stuff. So where do we want to begin today then? Well, I have been thinking about one other thing. We have a lot of natural light outside. I wouldn't be against us putting a window, you know, somewhere here. It would be really good to have it here just above the bed I would certainly be nervous having a window. We would ideally put in a glass pane to help stop smell from spreading because smell is one of the biggest ways that zombies and other creatures are able to track us in this. And having a look under construction and having a look at windows, we can build a window, an empty window. I don't know whether or not we can build it just straight through the stone. No, we can't. Okay, well, I guess that kind of answers that. If we did want to do that, we would have to construct the wall in such a way that we would be able to put a window there. So that is a later thing for us to think about. I, I think the first thing that I want to try and do is have a look at this step ladder. So we are going to need some more planks. I believe that we do have some wood here still, just some logs. Indeed we do, we've got at least three left at this stage, so one should get us close. 
Let's see. We want to cut this into planks. And there we go. Nine planks. How are we looking in terms of totals now? We have enough. Exactly enough, in actual fact. So let's go make this wooden step ladder. All right. There it is. We're a little thirsty. So let's go knock down some of the nice clean water in the oven. I think we're probably going to have to put a little more water on soon. That's okay. And now let's go and grab, or rather we're going to have to just wield, the wooden step ladder. Okay. All right. Are you going to work how I hope you are? Uh, let's see. Activate. Place. Can we place it there? We can. Okay, so that should make it a lot easier to climb up, and we're going to need that ease because this thing here is going to be heavy. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole ass wind turbine. Now, can we place it? We don't seem to be able to place it. So if we have a look at the wind turbine, it does say we can install it in a vehicle or it can be installed as an appliance. I'll be honest, I am not sure how we would install it as an appliance. Most of the time I have used vehicles when it comes to creating these power systems, but I'm intrigued about the appliance option because we might not actually need to have it on a frame then. I think to get things started, let's at the very least get up on top of the roof. So we are going to climb to the west, we slip and fall. Okay, well, I guess it's good that we did have that there. Let's try again. And we are successful. Okay, so we are probably just going to drop that there for the time being. And yeah, we do have these walls up here, right? We haven't completed them yet. I am still intrigued about trying to build a little bit of a tower up here. But uh, yeah, if we're going to do the wind turbine, I'm thinking maybe this side here because then it's going to be blocked by less of this stuff. I might actually just try and see if we can cancel the construction. There we go, and we got some rocks back for it. Okay, now, if we were to try and climb back down here, let's see, two stories down. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's not gonna work for us, and I'm hoping, I am hoping that it's going to line up okay with the wind turbine. Otherwise, what we might have to try and do is just have it run down through that door there. The cable, that is the extension lead. And honestly, I think that's probably closer to where we'd want to have things. So let's just move this over here for now, with maybe the intention of actually setting it here. And I'm going to try and climb down. Um, we don't have anything in our hands right now, so we should be okay. And we are good. Now, step ladder, I'm going to grab you back right away. Let's just uh, take that down and wield it. Okay, and... <laughs> Let's just get a better position for this thing to be in. I mean, we could just kind of set it up to the side here. We can't set it, rather, it wouldn't make much sense to set it up here. I mean, it could if we just move the butcher's rack. You know what? Let's just set it for now, because it is going to make it a lot easier for us to just climb up now. And it did actually put the little arrow there. Right. Yeah, we can climb up easy as. And now if we just try and climb down... And it did say that we should be able to do it easily as well. Uh, we are straining because we do have a fair bit of weight on us. But yeah, that's a good first step in my mind. I'm actually having a look at the... Oh, I was having a look at the... The walls here. Caterpillar. Yeah. We still miss you. Right. I'm going to have a look to see if I can figure out exactly how the installation of appliances is meant to work. And I'll be right back. All right, so the first thing that we are going to need is a proper battery. Now, I had thought that we had already made a clay car battery, but I could be mistaken in thinking that. I did just do a quick search, and one of the easiest ways to do this is just to open up your event log, and you can actually search back this way here. And so we can see that we were working on the light, dry batteries, and I don't see anything in there about a clay car battery at all. And I also don't believe that it's being used in anything at the moment. The makeshift arc welder has our largest battery, the medium one, in it at the moment. So if we are going to try and make this thing, we're going to need a few things. And I think we're actually going to need some more clay. More clay than what we've got right now. And I don't believe we got any extra clay from downstairs. Probably still worth me having a look to see. So let's poke our head down. Oh, of course. Yeah troublemakers yeah oh of course now that you've hatched yeah i need to get some 
I need to get some cat food. Some cat food or some cattle fodder. Okay. Well, it's very easy to get distracted with these things. So that's now on our list of things to do as well. And hey, there are actually two lumps of clay. There might be some other clay stashed around here. So we'll just do an all-around search to see if we can discover any. If not, then, well, we'll have to go to one of our clay spots. We can see one of the juveniles that's down here, which I think we should be able to push them out the way, but obviously, yeah, it's a, it's a biggie. And oh, oh, I've messed up. Um, I have messed up here. This is a problem. Um, we can't, hmm, yep. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, okay. Well, we were going to have to deal with this problem sooner or later. Uh, I think what we're going to do... <laughs> first of all is light up our candle so that we can see and we can see oh we can see over this way now okay but yeah we are unfortunately gonna have to deal with this big one that is now standing on where we want to get out of this is a ceratopsian so it's just like sarah upstairs yeah we are gonna go and uh pull out one of these blunderbusses and um yeah I feel like here is is good enough, right? Yeah, let's just uh, let's go for a full precise shot here, and hope for the best. Well, that got it angry, <laughs> and it is still good. Um, so I want to see if we can very quickly activate our holster again here and draw out the blunderbuss. We're going to drop the other one, which is great. We can do that quite quickly. We're going to start to run. Uh, and I'm ready to run. Oh, I think it might actually be able to attack us from here. It depends if it has the range of an adult, and I don't think it does. Another shot. Okay, another really good hit. Heavy arterial bleeding. It's not looking so good. So we're going to turn and we're going to start to run. And I've just realized now that generally when you attack one thing, other things will become hostile within the area. And there could be other Ceratopsian juveniles. We've got another green and purple down here, which I think... I think that fits in with uh, Sarah. Okay, we might be able to get away with a reload here. I'm going to attempt it. If we need to, we can... Oh. Ha. Huh. We don't have a... We don't have a melee weapon. That's a little bit of a problem. A little bit of a problem. We're not wearing our gauntlets at the moment. That's okay. But yeah, our, our Iron Shog Quarterstaff was destroyed in that in that fight <laughs> with the Rattlesnake. Okay, let's hope that it's not going to follow us around the corner here. And it didn't. Okay. Alright. Well, there it is. And it's been bleeding out. So I gotta hope that we can get a strike in here. Something hurts. Stop aiming. Um, I'm going to say yes. Ah, yep, you full-on gored us. Okay. Gordon Ramsay. Terrible, I know, terrible. Uh, we are not going to stop aiming. Um, I think we're just going to have to take the shot. Okay, 34 damage. Pretty good. This thing is so close to death now. Uh, but we are going to turn. And uh, this little guy is going to be in our way. Right, what is our best improvised weapon that we can use right now? The blunderbuss, how does that actually stack up as a melee weapon? It's got a bash of 12. It takes quite a few uh, moves to attack with it though. I think we would probably stand a better chance if we just dropped it on the ground and if we tried to just use our fists. We do have brawling as a fighting style, so let's see. This is not exactly a great situation to find ourselves in. Come on. No damage. Okay. Muldoon. Ten dinos killed. And we are badly bleeding. This was a... Uh... A big... A big mistake. A very big mistake. That we need to rectify right away. So... We are going to immediately start to try and put some of these birch bark bandages on our left arm. And we're going to go and put one on our right arm to help with the bleeding. That has certainly helped. Right. Torso next. 
All right, and it's just our left arm now. And our left arm has already been bandaged. It's still just got minor bleeding on it at the moment. So I think what we're gonna try and do is just put pressure on and the bleeding is stopped. Okay, we need to get this corpse out of here. We're gonna try and make the most of this. Uh, yeah, our plan for what we're doing right now has changed somewhat. We're gonna start off by reloading both of the blunderbusses and I think that means that they should be back, yep, in their holsters. All right, now we need to haul this body out of here as best we can. All right. Oh boy, that was a uh, more than a little bit of a mistake. Now we need you to get out the way. Thank you very much. Uh, we need to actually drag some of the stuff out the way first. Up we go. Hi, team. Don't worry about this. Yeah, it's fine. It's it's totally fine. Okay, now that we have that there, let's start processing this thing. Okay, one full butchery, and two hours later, we should have a fair amount of resources over here. And that we do. So, even from a juvenile, we're getting 800 pieces of meat, a whole heap of sinew, and a whole heap of raw hides. The hides are probably the most important thing for us right now. The large stomach as well. I wouldn't mind picking up that. Uh, how many of those hides can we pick up? Surely we can't pick up all of them. You're overburdened. Some items were not picked up. Well, that's okay. Let's just sit at... Wow, we actually did pick up all the hides. Or maybe... Yeah, no. It, very nearly all of them. Okay, we're going to drop them for now. Just keep them separate. And we'll take the one from here as well. Or rather the four, the sinew as well, the large stomach. Uh, and I wouldn't mind trying to make some cat food. Because we do have the stuff that's downstairs. I would like to work on that. We're very hungry at the moment. <laughs> okay, um, could we possibly get some of that meat prepared as well? We, we, can, we can certainly try. Let's get the travois out the way for now. 300 charcoal in here, none in there. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna preserve at least some of the meat for now. So let's go get that reloaded. Oh, we've got a lot of charcoal. We should be fine. So let's just put 500 into there for now. And yeah, we can we can reach the stuff in the lean to. That's super handy. We'll put another thousand in here. And then at the bottom, another thousand. Okay, now. Let's get it loaded up with food. We actually already had some vegetables in there. And hey, it actually remembers what the dehydrated vegetable was now. We can see that these are dehydrated cat stalks. Cat tail stalks, rather. <laughs> okay, let's go put some food in here. Chunks of meat. All right, and yeah, I think it's about 80 each time. So that's them locked and loaded. We'll drag everything else back up here for now. And let's get these things kicked into action there we go now this is obviously just going to give us smoked meat and that's okay i don't think we need to dehydrate everything um we already have quite a bit of dehydrated meat obviously i will want to leave some of this but let's just see first of all exactly what we need for the cat food yeah it is just it's a cooking sauce we can make this with the scraps of meat so we're just going to take the scraps inside for now we should also take the dehydrated stuff and the bones. Everything else can just stay out here for the time being. So let's take all of this, head back inside, and we'll have a look at processing some stuff. But we'll have some pemmican first of all, which is going to make us a little thirsty, but that's okay. Huge calorie intake. Great. Our iron is up to some, and our calcium and vitamin C, they're, they're both on little currently. I think if we keep on eating the pemmican throughout the day, that will start to raise. Okay, back to the candle for now, and let's kick things off with some cat food. Uh, we should be able to make a fair amount of this. Leather cat tail? Oh, as in an actual glossy black leather cat tail. <laughs> okay, um, I don't think we need that. I think we're good. Let's just go with the, uh, yeah, the regular cat food for now. And let's say four, because I feel like there's a few of them downstairs that we could tame up. And of course, the wet cat food will only work if they are carnivores. So we'll find out pretty quickly if we have something interesting down there. Not to say that you can't have interesting herbivores. Uh, it's just we have seen a lot of herbivores. We haven't seen a lot of carnivores yet. So popping downstairs... 
Um, all right, we'll push past. Light green and yellow. I don't think you are going to... Oh, all right. <laughs> Accidentally attacked it. Uh, doesn't want that kind of food. That's fine. Okay, so I think the dark yellow will be... Well, it is at least one that we haven't seen yet. The light green and magentas and all the rest, we probably we probably need to deal with. Dark grey and magenta. Okay, you are a green and magenta. Okay, who we got here? Right, where is our brown and magenta? Let's have a look at the brown and magenta, eh? Nope. Right. So it's mostly been like the red and white. The brown and white, you might have been one. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> Same deal there. Okay, that's a brown and white. So yeah, that's... Oh, okay. Ha ha. Brown and white, you are a carnivore. I see, I see. Actually, you know what? Let's let's use our torch here. That'll help. Ah, much better. Much, much better. Okay, so. Dark grey and yellow. Right. Let's try and activate that. Yep. Dark grey and yellow is now our pet. Okay, and they are going to follow us around, so we're going to have to make some more ropes, aren't we? Yep, yep, yeah, we are. Okay, so let's just double check. Dark grey and yellow. That was... That was right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. Light green and yellow. So we should have three of them following us around at the moment. Oh my gosh. There's so many of them down here. Uh, yep. Okay. Dark gray magenta. Not worried about that. Brown and magenta. Light green. Okay. Okay. I think, I think we've had a look at all of them now. And these three, the brown and white, the dark grey and yellow, and the dark, or the other dark grey and yellow. <laughs> okay, now, now we know, and you're a light green and yellow. Right, we are definitely going to have to deal with the other uh, little ones downstairs. Uh, also, I guess we need to make sure that there aren't any others just chilling out down there. Um, yeah, I don't want to lead these ones downstairs because they're going to get real confused otherwise. So let's just drop the cat food for now. I do want to go downstairs still. We're going to have to use the cage outside to go and capture these three. And then we'll uh, we'll take them out to the pen. However, we are going to need ropes for them. Otherwise, they're just going to follow us. Um, yeah, once they grow up, they will beeline towards us. Because right now as hatchlings, they can't jump the fence. But as soon as they become adults, they will be large enough to. And I don't want... Maybe they're not going to be big. You know what? Screw it. Let's gamble, eh? Let's gamble. All right, I do need you to get out the way. There we go. And we are going to deal with all of these other hatchlings. Yeah, we can't, we can't go the dino army route. I don't think that's going to work out well for us. So yeah, let's just go get that cage and... Um, do what we need to do and i think we actually already have one in here in the cage i think oh it's holding a goose right uh and the goose will fly away as we know <laughs> you know what screw it yeah it's syrup syrup uh be free oh just don't don't stand there yeah syrup is immediately flying all right, well, that's that's fine. Sir, you you do you. We will do what we need to do. Okay, so we need that torch, first of all. And, uh, yeah, let's get you captured. Okay, and they're very easy to capture. Uh, so this should be a relatively quick process for us. Okay, and we are going to release that just over here for now. Please stay inside. There we go. And it will try and follow us, but it won't be able to yet. Next one captured and released and that should be our last one at least for the moment there we go release you over the fence there so those are our uh, the two brown and whites and the dark gray and yellow so we've got two dark gray and yellows we've got some light reds and whites and a few other brown and whites there the green and magenta we already know what you're going to turn into at least the two of you. At least I'm pretty sure. No, maybe not. Because green and magenta ceratopsian. Friendly. I mean, this could just be like Ryan. Yeah. That would make sense. Or maybe not. Who knows? Who knows? Okay, let's just 
half climb the fence for now, we'll drop off the cage and we'll pop down into the mine just to double check and see what we got down there. And then we're, we're going to have to deal with this, with all, with all of this. Yeah, we'll take we'll take the wooden spear as a as a temporary weapon for now, and we'll see what awaits us down below. All those hatchlings, well, that's a light green and magenta hiding down there. And we are trying to fight to get past it. Halfway down, it becomes blocked off. <laughs> of course it does. Eventually it will move, so I think it's just about kind of trying to wait this little bastard out so that we can actually get down there. Hey, let's try yell. Any luck? Huh, interesting. So it does say that we push past it and we're kind of up here but not. And then if I move, we're, we're back up the top. Weird. We just might not be going down to the mine. Oh, I was going to say anytime soon, but we, we made it that time. Okay, so yeah, now this definitely needs to be dealt with. Let's light the torch up. It's just run out of energy. Okay, fine. We'll be able to see better once we actually move away from the entrance here. But for these uh, little ones, we are going to have to activate that spear strap of ours, and we're going to have to do a little bit of work. Um, and they are going to be quite hard to hit but we did it sorry about this sorry about this um oh light red and white and there is a hmm, the light red and white is a carnivore so let's let's get the let's get the damn cat food we can always make more of it as well whoop whoops sorry sorry about that oh you're green and purple so I'm okay with attacking you, as long as you guys don't swap position. And now it's a light red, okay. Let's give you the cat food, there we go. So now we can just swap positions with you, perfectly fine. Green and purple, you gotta go. And I, yeah, I think both of them can go. Aha! <laughs> oh, it's Leanne! Ah, hey Leanne, you're just, you're, you're, you're kind of hanging out down here, huh? Well, I'm sorry about this Leanne, but your, your friends have to go because they're causing all kinds of trouble for us. There we go, finally got one. It looks like there's just one left at this stage, and it's a dark gray and yellow. Well, let's go get cooking. One more thing of cat food for now. And I'm okay with leaving the other carnivores down there for now, because I guess if it comes to it, we can just uh, let them deal with the hatchling problem that we have downstairs. We are extremely wary now as well, so I should be a little bit cautious about overexerting ourselves. Let's just make two for now, just in case there's an extra one down there. All right, here we go. All right, that's a brown and magenta down. Oh, hello. Hey, uh, and you're our friendly one, okay. And you, dark grey and yellow. Alright, there you go. It's all yours and you're our pet now. And get another dark grey and yellow. So good that we did two lots of food there. Is that it? One more green and purple. Okay, there we go. We got there <laughs> at the end. And actually, we're only very weary now. Not extremely weary. Let's free up our hands. And we are going to drag out the remains from here. Because we do actually want to make use of them. This wasn't exactly what I intended to do today. But, you know, sometimes this is just uh, this is how it happens. So we're going to drop them on here. And we are going to do a full butchery of everything that's here. Oh, we're not in the mood. And the prospects of blood and guts on your hands convinces you to turn away. We felt guilty about killing. Of course we did. Of course we did. Well, I like that. I like that. That's that's good. That makes sense for Hilma. Now we could try to improve our mood by playing the bone flute and whatnot. But I think for now, I want to get at least a little bit closer to what our original goal was. And that's to look at making this clay car battery. We have exactly the amount of clay that we need, but we are requiring more sulfuric acid. We've got three at the moment. We need 10 more, which we should be able to make. We just need to have the water to do it. And interestingly enough, it actually requires clean water rather than just your regular bog standard water. So let's grab our pot here, drink down the last of that water, and we'll go visit our well. And we're stocked up on that now, 150. And of course, it will take a little while for this to boil off. I do want to make sure that we've only got 
one log in there at the moment. Indeed we do, it is a burnt log, but it should be able to go long enough, let's see. Obviously it's going to get more than a little hot in here. It says 20 minutes at the moment, so we'll, we'll give it a little while. Yeah, okay, fire's going to burn out in 26 minutes, so I am going to chuck the other log on there. That will give it the fuel it needs, and we're just going to, we're going to rest. Uh, not actually sleep, because we'll probably end up falling asleep. So we're just going to go prone, and we're just going to, we're going to wait a while. Our temperature right now seems to be fluctuating between being warm and being too hot, but yeah, no, this is nice. We're getting our weariness slowly back to somewhere that's kind of good, but yeah, we're just going to keep on waiting here. Ah, what I should have been doing while we were waiting is working on this large stomach here and the rawhide that we have. So yeah, let's look at doing that. We are just going to take off some of our stuff so we aren't going to be as warm. There we go. That should be a little bit more comfortable now. Ah, so for our sealed stomach, we will actually need some pine boughs. So we can always pop out to do that. See what we need for curing. Salt. Okay, so let's crack open the door there and see that we can do a whole heap of curing. Four hours and 14 minutes will allow us to do 50 of those hides. Well, I think we might as well get started. And the light's gone out outside. So this is probably all that we will do for now, but those hides are now safe. And the water is clean. Unfortunately, the stomach has rotten. Does happen rather quickly. We have about a day to process all those hides as well. And I would like to, at the very least, get them cured. Well, now that the water is done, we can extinguish that flame. Just so that it's not super hot in here. We can get ourselves a nice sleep. And we're waking up chilly this morning. My gosh. Well, it does make sense. Let's go get a little warmer. We don't have to chuck everything on, but just a little will help us out. And because it's a little bit more time sensitive for us, I think we will just work on those hides first of all. And we actually had to chuck the rest of our gear on because we were starting to get quite cold. But we've only got one lot of curing left to do. Well, I say that. We're going to be very, very close. We need to do 12 after this lot. And there's our final 12. Okay. That is done. Okay, we're actually feeling pretty tired after that. <laughs> And we did have a good sleep last night. We must have just woken up a little bit earlier than I actually thought. But now we can, of course, work on creating that sulfuric acid. Now, we did only need 10 more, I believe. It's still going to take us 3 hours and 4 minutes to cook it on up. But that's that done. We'll pour that into... Ah, there we go. The sealed stomach. Um, we have to put one more somewhere else. So just a glass bottle for the time being. We'll have our pemmican and our clean water. And then, having a look at the clay car battery, we are just going to need to charge up our kiln. Well, that or just have a nearby fire. And interestingly enough, it does need to be a kiln of some kind. So our forge up there won't work. So I think we're probably just going to have to start a fire down here for now. Chucking the last of the logs on there, let's get that started on up. We will start getting a fair bit more warmer, but that should allow us, yeah, to make the clay car battery. And it's only going to take us an hour to do it. There is a chance that we could fail at this as well. It is a 12 volt lead acid battery used to power car electrical systems contained in a clay shell. Of course, we're not going to be using it for a car battery to start with. We're going to be using it more for our home network. So let's cross our fingers and hope that we can get this thing built. Now, what do we want to use? Honestly, we've got a lot of tin powder. But then again, wood ash, we haven't really been using for much, if anything else. So, yeah, let's say wood ash instead. And that's that. Okay. In a little clay jar there, we have a clay car battery. Now, I hope that I am going to be able to hook that up, okay, to the turbine upstairs. There's only one way to find out though, right? And so, let's pop on up. Aha, okay, so, I believe we'll have to place it first of all. We just need a tool with bolt turning of two or more. Okay, totally doable. One adjustable wrench. And now, let's see, we should be able to do this thing. Yeah, place wind turbine and there's also place car battery okay so 
let's place this thing just here. All right, takes a little bit to put it in place, but it's set up. It is set up. A wind turbine. Okay, now, clay car battery. Let's see. Are we needing to put that on the same square? No, so it needs to go somewhere else. Let's just put it directly behind it for now. Okay, and now can we hook them together? Yeah, plug in appliance. Attach loose ends to a vehicle. You f Okay, did that, did that do it? Examine appliance. Wind turbine. Wind output is 8 watts. Battery power output, 8 watts. Is, is that, is that working? Are we getting power from it? All right, well, this is the battery. Right now, it's, it has nothing. We could just wait a little bit to see whether or not it is working. Okay, there's a gentle breeze now. Has that adjusted the power? No, it seems to be about the same. And we've got power. We have power. We did it. We did it. Helmer, <laughs> this is a monumental achievement. Atop the cave, the turbine spins. And without actually having like a digital readout or anything, I think that Helmer's probably just sticking her finger into the clay jar to see if it uh, tingles. <laughs> yeah. We have power, we have electricity. Now, we also have our cable. I'm hoping we're gonna be able to run it from this to back inside the cave. Honestly, the, the first and most basic thing that I would like to try and see if we can get implemented is a light. That would be incredible. But that is all for the future. I'd like to thank you all for joining me for another episode here at the dawn of time with our Baroness. Hilma Baron, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. For now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the Legion on Patreon, who continue to make this cataclysmic content possible.